So we know indexing makes your database faster. In this video, we'll go through how exactly indexing makes your database faster. We'll go through how indexes help you minimize the disk IOs that needs to be done by constructing a very simple index, basic mathematics to just understand what happens behind the scene. So let's jump into it. A database, to be very simply put, is just a collection of records. Like now, if it's a SQL thing, it could be the collection of rows grouped into tables. If it's, let's say, MongoDB or any document-based database, it would be like a collection of JSON documents. But the idea is all of those documents needs to be stored in a, so needs to be serialized and then stored onto the disk right so how does that serialization happen so in this one we'll take an example of a very simple uh, a, a very simple sequential serialization like here like what we typically see with sql databases right so let's take an example of sql database will not go dive uh, will not go deeper into b plus tree and we'll see how it fits into the scheme of thing but just a basic understanding of how indexes work so let's say we have a users table and it has five columns, ID, name, age, bio, and total blocks. So every, every column or, or every attribute over here will take up some space onto the disk, which means that when that attribute or when this row needs to be serialized, every attribute gets its particular size or its particular set of bytes stored onto the disk. Right. So here, ID being an integer, let's say it takes up 4 bytes. Name, I uh, put it as 60 bytes. Age, again an integer, so 4 bytes. Bio could be a big one. Uh, let's say we put it as 128 bytes. And total number of blocks, as in how many blocks has this user published, would be an integer, so 4 bytes. So in all, when I'm trying to store one row onto the disk, it would take up 200 bytes to store one disk, uh, to store one uh, row. Right. Okay, so here we saw user table, five columns, 200 bytes to store one row onto the disk. Now let's say my table, my users table has 100 rows like this. So what would be the total size of this table? 200 for each row, 100 rows like this. So 20,000, so basically 20,000 bytes is what will require. So it would look something like this. Let's say these are like dummy entries in my table where ID one, name is A, <coughs> age is 23, some bio, and then total number of blocks seven. ID two, name is B, age is 21, bio, something, 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 total blocks is 10, and so on and so forth, right? So let's say we are playing with this six entries and there are many more entries like this, totaling up to 100 rows, right? Now let's go through and understand how disk, how reads from the disk actually happen. So wherever anything is being read from the disk, like even if you read one byte from the disk, it's not that only that byte is read, it's a block is read. So your entire disk, be it magnetic storage, be it SSD, it's split into blocks, right? And these blocks are consecutive in nature. Now, a block can be like a standard configuration of block is typically 4 KB. But you can change it. You can make it you can make it bigger or you can make it smaller. Each one has its own set of consequence. In this example, let's take an example of our block size being 600 bytes. Which means if you have if you have let's say 1 GB of hard disk, on that 1 GB of hard disk, 600 bytes ka blocks. Uh, like it is split into 600 byte blocks right and whenever like let's say I have this as a space and it is split into four blocks for now and let's say if I want to read these bytes which is highlighted in uh, which is highlighted in yellow over here if I want to read these bytes it is not that I'll only be reading these bytes so when I'm doing a disk IO the disk IO will fetch the block that is contained or, or rather within which the bytes that I am requesting are contained. So here if I am requesting these bytes, what your disk IO will do is it will go to the disk, like it will hit the disk, read that particular block, load it in memory, read these bytes and then send it to the user. 
right and basically send it for the further processing right so no matter how many bytes you would want to read it's not that only those bytes are read but the entire block is brought into memory you read that many bytes and then you basically continue your processing right so block is the unit of data read from the disk right now let's see how our users table that we just discussed how that fits into my blocks thing so we know that each record or each row of my users table is 200 bytes long we know that a block size for this example is 600 bytes right which means that in each block like if i'm serializing this entire table in each block i can contain three rows so my users table would look something like this on disk so on disk i have these blocks the four blocks that we just discussed right so the first three rows will go and sit in the first block the second three rows will go and sit in the second block and so on and so forth because a block has like let's say six, uh, a block has 600 bytes covered like that's the size of the block each record is 200 bytes long so how many rows would be fit three rows so in this block we are putting in three rows in this block we are putting in three rows in this block we are putting in three rows and so on and so forth so to represent 100 no rather to store 100 rows on the disk how many blocks would we require we would require 100 by 3 it is 33.3 but we cannot like the block is not divisible so we need 34 blocks to store this entire table this entire table onto the disk right? this entire table onto the disk stored serially as a as a series of blocks which is total number of uh, blocks required is 34 right now how much time now let's say if i'm going through this table row by row how much time would it require for us to read this entire table so to read this entire table what would we require is we would have to iterate table row by row request a particular row the the your disk engine or your cpu in that case will identify hey i want to read this particular block from the disk it will go to the disk uh, sorry it would say i want to read this particular row from the disk it would find the byte offset it would go onto the disk read that block keep in memory extract the record and basically use it for further processing so the amount of time that we would require to go through the entire table will be equal to the amount of time required for us to read those many number of blocks so because like hypothet very hypothetical example but let's say if i if i like when i do a disk io and i'm reading one block let's say hypothetically it takes one second for us to read one block from the disk hypothetically it's it's much lower but hypothetically let's say it's one second so to read the entire table or to iterate through the entire table because we are reading 34 blocks how much time would it require for us to do it it will be 34 seconds because each block one second total 34 blocks total 34 seconds so if I'm just iterating my table row by row, it will take it is taking me 34 seconds to do it. Now let's say we want to evaluate a query. The query goes like this: that find all the users with age 23. So what I typically have to do, because up until now we have not added any indexes to this table, what are we doing to do? We will iterate the table row by row. We will read the record. We will see if this record has age 23. If it has, we would we would basically put it in and buffer uh, and then we would basically collating that buffer so we'll be iterating it row by row we would find all the rows with age 23 we'll check if the row has uh, if the record has age equal to equal to 23 if yes we would add that record to an output buffer if no we would discard that particular record and then after the iteration of the table is done we would then return the output buffer as part of the response of my query right so now to do this how much time would it require because we are iterating the entire table we are iterating the entire table row by row which means we'll be accessing all 34 blocks so time taken for us to answer this query is same as time taken to read all the blocks of my table so because there are 34 blocks it would require us 34 seconds to answer this query because we are reading we are going through all of this thing now let's see how indexes make them make this particular flow faster <coughs> so 
So, what exactly is an index? Index are very small referential tables that holds the row references against the indexed value. Right? It's very simple concept. So, let's say we, because we are querying, uh, we would want to query all users with age 23. Uh, what we would want is we would want to create an index on column age. So how does that index actually be stored onto the disk? See, disk only knows block, right? So somehow your index will also be serialized and be stored onto the disk as blocks. So an index is very similar to like an index to be honest is just a two dimensional or oh, sorry, two column table where the first column is age and the second column is id which means it's just a it's just like an it's just like a mapping from the indexed value to the row id or or to the row to in which that particular value is present so for example here age 23 uh, so so age 23 is present for row id 1 age 21 is present for row id 2 age 22 is present in row id 3 so here it's that only so age 21 row id 2 H22 row ID3, H22 is present at multiple places. So H22 is present in row ID5, H23 is present in row ID1, H23 is also present in row ID4, and so on and so forth. If you closely observe the column, like your sorry, your index is sorted, is sorted by your indexed column, which means it will be sorted by the uh, by age in this case. So 21, 22, 23, 24, so on and so forth. So this is exactly how your index will also be serialized, will also be serialized and stored onto the disk. Right. Now let's see how much uh, size or what's the width of like how much size would it require, how many bytes would it require for you to store one entry of this index. Right. So one entry of this index is what? One age and one ID. Age is an integer, ID is an integer. So four plus four is equal to eight bytes. So each entry of this index is eight byte bits. So there will be how many entries uh, in the index? Every row, one entry in the index. So total number of entries is equal to 100. Uh, total, which means the total size of index is equal to eight for each entry into 100 entries is equal to 800 bytes. Our one disk block is 600 bytes. So how many disks, how many disk block would we require? Two disk block, right? So for the as many entries as it can fill in one block, it will put it all remaining entries. So first 600 bytes will be gone in first block. Remaining 200 bytes will go in second block. So your index, in order to represent your index onto your disk, like if you are serializing your index and storing it onto the disk, it will only require you two disk blocks to store that. Now let's evaluate the same query with index and see how the flow would happen. So here, now that we have an index on ID column, what we do in worst case, so this is not how SQL database or NoSQL database does it. It's a very simple flow that I'm taking you through. Uh, database actually does it with B plus three and it has its own set of importance, but just to understand how indexes power your database, let's go through the worst case and say that every time someone queries, every time, someone queries anything, I'll go through my complete index. Like I'll go through my complete index without any optimization. Right? So what we do is we iterate through the complete index. First. So let's say I'm firing the queries, find all users with age equal to 23. The first thing that I'll do is I'll iterate through all the entries in my index right? and find out who for which age is 23. I'll collect all the IDs that I have. Like if I'm talking about this index, what I'll do is I'll go through this index, like every entry one by one, and I'll find all the entries whose age is equal to 23. Uh, then I'll get the ID and I'll hold it in a, uh, I'll hold it in an in-memory buffer. Ki haan, all of these IDs are something just which, which I am interested in because for these IDs, age is equal to 23, right? So I'll iterate index. Uh, uh, so I'll iterate my index uh, entry by entry, which means block by block. I'll check if age is equal to 23 in the entry. If yes, add the ID in a buffer. If no, discard. Right. So how how many disk blocks would I have to read to 
prepare this set of IDs that I am interested in. Because I am going through the entire index and index is represented in two blocks. It will require me two disk IOs. That's it. So two disk reads and I'll be done. So two disk reads and I'll be break and I'll be reading the entire index, uh, filtering out all the values like and so so rather I'll be collecting all the IDs that I'm interested in, which means whose age is equal to 23. <coughs> and then I'll have this ID and I'll have this buffer prepared. Right? After iterating through the index, I'll have the list of IDs that I'm interested in. So first phase done. Now, because I already have the IDs that I'm interested in because of the index that I have, now my next step would be to, because to user, I have to send the entire record. So my next phase, my next step would be using this ID, I would want to get the actual row data, right? So the next phase would be for all the relevant IDs that I have collected after iterating through my index, I would want to read the corresponding records from the main table. Right. So I would be reading the main, the, the, the actual record from the main table of all the IDs that I, uh, the, uh, that I found to be relevant for age equal to 23. And I'm basically collecting it in the buffer and then sending it out to the user as an, uh, as a response. Right. <coughs> now here for the second phase of it, the amount of time that will require to fetch this, to fetch these records. Uh, to fetch actual records from the ID would be equal to the number of disk blocks that we would have to read to answer this thing. So let's say we just take an example of our, of our example where age is equal to 23. So first phase, iterating through the index, finding out relevant IDs, reading the entire index, two blocks required, two blocks means two seconds per se, like our hypothetical use case. So number of blocks read here to prepare that IDs ka list is equal to two block reads. Right? Now, now that I have ID, so for age equal to 23, two row IDs were important, row ID 1 and row ID 4, like ID 1 and ID 4, both of them had, had age is equal to 23. Right? So these are the addresses of my, of my record. Right? So these two records I'm interested in. Now, these two records are present in how many blocks? We know that my table is sequentially stored. First three blocks were stored in first block. Second three rows were stored in second block. So how many blocks? So if I'd want to read this one block, one record, as I told at the beginning of this, that even if you want to read one byte from it, your disk will always perform a block read. It would read that entire block in memory, extract that byte and then discard the block. Like it is basically caching it, but let's say it's basically discarding the block. So if I'm reading this particular, I want to read this particular record, which means I have to read this entire block. So I'll read the first three entries. I'll read the block here, which means it would load these three records. I would then find out, okay, for this age is equal to 23 because I have the offset. I can directly go and read that record and add it to my buffer. Similarly, for ID equal to four, I'm finding that it is present in the second block. So I'm reading the second block from the disk in memory, finding out that record, uh, adding it to the buffer and then discarding it. So to answer this query, how many disk blocks uh, to get the actual record from the reference ID, how many disk blocks do I have to read? Two disk blocks, right? So to read the actual record, two disk blocks, to read the index to find the relevant IDs, two disk blocks. So total number of, so total number of uh, disk blocks that we read to answer this query with index is equal to four blocks, right? And we know that approximately, hypothetically, we took that one disk block uh, reading is equal to one second. So the total number of time that we would require to answer this query would be equal to four seconds, right? So two for index, two for record. So now if we compare the time, the time taken without, so time taken to answer the query without the index was equal to 32 seconds because we had to read 32 blocks iterating through the table uh, step by step. While with index, with index, we only had to read four blocks, two blocks for the index and two blocks for the actual data. Right? Now, if we see only with this, with this example, we were able to gain 8x performance out of like just by creating an index, we were able to get 8x performance out of my system. Right? So imagine at scale how things would happen. Right? 
because at scale this indexes are such like 8x improvement is not a small improvement it's a massive 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 improvement right so if it if a query was taking 8 seconds to execute now it is just taking 1 second to execute like that's insane amount of speed that you get and this which is precisely why whenever you are querying on any data on any database a database always like you always have to keep an eye on are you querying on a column that is not indexed if that is not indexed it in worst case it may lead to it, it may lead to sequential iteration across like a full table scan to be honest in worst case worst case right so that is where you need to understand that how this blocks are uh, you need to understand the importance of indexes and how it makes things faster there are so many ways to implement indexes this is one very typical way of implementing indexes and basically fetching on it but it totally depends on the database that you have at hand like for example a few optimization that you can do with index scanning is you may not need to read entire index every time if you can create a multi level indexing so multi level indexing is what b is what b tree and b plus tree are famous for right so they minimize the number of blocks that you would have to like here right now you are iterating on the complete index like here you are iterating on the complete index to find out the relevant ids this also can be optimized by just by doing an mv search on a b plus tree to find out the blocks that you are interested in and basically nothing else right otherwise in this simple example only you can just stop iterating once you cross 23 like you requested for age is equal to 23 we know that index is sorted you can start reading block by block and as you know that hey you you crossed age equal to 23 here so then you can just stop reading it so you can you'll just be reading one block so you'll be saving one more disk block read if you know that now you don't need to iterate like there are always optimizations to do that and that's what database do it well so that's what the job of the storage engine uh, storage engine of the database is on how it processes the index how it stores the index and all but this would give you a very comprehensive idea on how indexes make your database faster what's the idea behind it how disk reads happen in blocks and all right okay that's it from me i hope this video added a value and basically cleared up uh, the the most fundamental thing of how indexes make your database faster and in turn uh, help you understand the importance of indexes while firing a query so while using a sql database or any database in general always see you have the right set of indexes otherwise your database will very will will very quickly uh, be set on fire right because one one rubbish query can take down your entire database so just so just so just keep an eye on any time your query just keep an eye on that any query that you fire any column that you are using you are indexing you it is properly indexed because that's when you'll get the best performance of your out of your database nice so that's it from me in this video uh, if you folks like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton